In this clip, we're going to learn about the shuffle node. So I have all the names of the nodes up here that you use in multi-channel workflow situations. Um, and so we'll be starting off each clip with a little bit of an overview of what each of these is about. And then at the end, we'll kind of see them all together. So first we're starting with the shuffle node. So the shuffle node looks a little like this. This is what the actual shuffle node looks like. It just has one input. And then here's a little screenshot of what the actual interface of the shuffle node looks like. Now this is a little bit different from what a lot of people are used to working with, with all these little boxes and things like that. But the key to being able to use it is to read it backwards. That's the secret. And you know, you may see other tutorials out there where they start switching all of these little things around and making things crazy colors. And that's, that's what you could use it for. But in the most practical sense, you're going to use it a lot of times with multi-channel EXRs. And I will show you how that works um, when we jump over here into Nuke. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm just going to add a shuffle node right here underneath my robot. There we go, there's the shuffle node. And basically what the shuffle node does is it says, what information do you want to come out of the read node? So we know that this multi-channel EXR has a ton of information in it, and we're just asking with the shuffle node, which ones do we want to come through? So by default, only the RGBA channels are coming through. And so the shuffle node looks at that and just basically gives us the same image as what we had if we were just looking at the read node. Now I am going to show you a little bit of how to play around with it just so you start to get your feet wet in the idea of how the shuffle and eventually the shuffle copy works. So again, like I said, you're reading it backwards. So this red right here, if I say, okay, the output red, whatever is showing up in the red channel, so things that are going to appear red in my viewer is what data is coming through it. So things that will appear red is where I'm looking here. And then I'm going to go backwards till I find an X. And it just so happens that in this case, it is in the red channel. So the red data that is, um, you know, the same, it's all red here. Now I can change that and say, okay, I don't want any red data and put it the box in the zero. And so now we've taken all of our red away. And I could do that same thing for the green. And now we've only got blue because I'm taking it all away. So I'm gonna take them all out of there. And then let's say, okay, I just wanna see the green. So I would go to green and then I would go backwards until I hit the green box and then I would click and then I would go up here and I would say, okay, there's the green. That's what's coming through the green channel, the data, that black and white data we talked about before, this right here is going to appear green because I'm outputting it here in the green. So now what happens if I say, okay, what I see as green um, normally the data that was out, that was written out in the channel originally as green, let's say I want that to be in the blue now. So I would look at the blue first because that's what I want. And instead of dumping here in blue, I would put it in green. Now this doesn't look a lot different because we have an image, you know, that's got a lot of similarities, but the red, we know that channel is very light because this is a primarily greenish bluish robot. So that's where you see this kind of start to dissipate. Now, like I said, when are you ever going to do that really in a composite? It's very rare that you're actually going to start playing around with all of these channels, especially with a shuffle node. Now you may do something kind of like this with a shuffle copy. And, I'll, and it's mostly going to be with the alpha channel and using RGB data from one place and 
alpha channel from another place. But in this case, the shuffle node, because it only has the one input, is really good for not just the RGBA data, but the other types of data that you get in a multi-channel EXR. For instance, one of these. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and revert this back to normal. So I'll come up here, right click, and choose revert knobs. And then where it says RGBA, I'll just drop that down and let's choose the direct diffuse. So now we're viewing just the direct diffuse information we got whenever this was rendered. Now, you might say, okay, well then why are there still these little boxes here? Well, it just means that to make this direct diffuse pass, we need red, green, and blue data, obviously, for it to all go together and have a diffuse pass. It's just, it's not just one of these channels. And because there's no alpha data, this last little box here just kind of gets dropped into the blue channel where it ends up going alpha, but it just doesn't really even exist. So don't worry about that one because there's only RGB data for the direct diffuse. Now, what I like to do when I'm using these shuffle nodes to shuffle out all of my stuff for multi-channel EXRs is to actually name what I'm doing here the same up here. And this is just a nice way to stay organized. So name it direct underscore diffuse. And now we see exactly what pass it is we're shuffling out here. So I'm gonna pull this one over to the side and I'm also gonna show you a quick little trick with something called dot nodes. And it's another just organization technique. If I hold down the control key, you see these little uh, diamonds, these little yellow diamonds pop up. And if I click it, then it's gonna create a dot node. And these are really good for when you don't wanna have a lot of diagonal pipes, which is best to just have horizontal and vertical pipes in Nuke. So what I can do is just create a little dot node there. So now it kind of goes this way. Now you may say, well, why didn't you just put it right under it? Why do you need to make it off to the side? Because I need to still shuffle out all the rest of these passes here. So let's make another shuffle node. I'll hit tab. Shuffle is still there from last time, so I can just hit enter and it will create the shuffle node. And then I'm gonna hook this one up to that dot node and then pull it over here a bit, hold down control again and create another dot node. So basically the flow of information, it's all flowing down into these dot nodes and then splitting off of the dot is where we're getting these uh, different pieces of data. So instead of diffuse, this time now I'll do the direct specular and I'll go ahead and name it direct specular. All right, let's move a little more quickly and finish up the rest of these. So tab, shuffle still there, enter, and it automatically hooked it up there because I dropped it on the viewer, but that's okay. Just unhook it really quickly. Next one is the indirect diffuse. There we go, we have the indirect diffuse now. Now this one's really hard to see, but it is there. But if your monitor is set to maybe um, not very contrasty, you might not even be able to see it. But there is a little bit of data there in that indirect diffuse. Now for this shuffle, it'll be the indirect specular, and again, We just rename that. Perfect. And then we have one more with refraction. So we'll add one last shuffle again to the dot nodes control. Refraction. And just rename that refraction. Perfect. Okay, so now we have all of those different passes shuffled out, and now I can view them individually much easier than if I was coming up here and having to choose from this. And it also allows me to composite a little more easily because if I'm just viewing it, then you know I, it's very easy to get confused. So this way I'm going to have direct access to the passes I want and then I can start compositing much more quickly. Let's go ahead and clear our properties bin by clicking our little remove all panels button. And then let's jump into our next clip where we'll be talking about the copy node.